for another fucking minute on this motherfucker. Back. So, been wanting to do this goddamn thing for a fucking while about, uh, you know, uh, different uh, scenes and whatnot about, uh, fuck, God damn it, I can't fucking think. Different uh, scenes in black metal and whatnot, how important they are. You know, you got fucking Canada and fucking Finland. America has a fucking solid-ass early black metal scene, but everybody always wants to talk about Sweden and Norway and whatnot, which, yes, that is very uh, integral, but there are other places that play played a part in creating the black metal sound. It's not just fucking Norway. I want to talk about Brazil. I know they get it. They Get uh, shout-outs, whatever the fuck you want to call it, but I think that they uh, deserve even more credit than, than uh, what they're given, honestly. You know, it's... <laughs> Stop! Motherfucking... The fucking... Motherfucking... God. Yes! Yes, motherfucker! Yes, we'll talk about it! Motherfucker! This little fucking sucker, his, his favorite fucking... Yes! We'll talk about it, motherfucker! His favorite goddamn Brazilian band is a Necro Butcher. The old fucking, well, they're still around now, but not goddamn Necro Butcher. Bass is from Mayhem. Necro Butcher from Brazil. That's his fucking favorite band, which is a good band. But yeah, we'll talk about him, motherfucker. Just give me a goddamn chance. So, yeah. Uh, Brazil, you know, it, it, it's they're pretty fucking influential, you know. Because, of course, he's got fucking the typical shit. He's fucking bullshit. Fucking spikes ass motherfucker. If you remember in the old days when I first started this goddamn channel, I used to wear these motherfuckers on every video. And then every time I'd be getting getting ready and stuff, the shit be scraping my fucking walls up and getting hung on shit. Tearing the fucking crap up so I stopped wearing them. I thought, dude, for fucking Brazil, this would be the perfect thing to wear. But now it's getting all fucking hung up on this goddamn shit. Anyway, man, trying to look all fucking evil as fuck. Anyway, let's get back to the goddamn topic, motherfucker. So Brazil, I mean, they uh, really, I feel, were very influential. You know, you got the Venom from fucking England, of course. Everybody knows that shit. Bathory, Norway. I, there's, I don't. There's no point talking about that shit. You know the fucking story. But going back to Brazil, they had a very interesting, touch, unique approach to it. For one, all the lo-fi recordings, because that's pretty much all they could record, uh, afford, I guess, whatever was available to them. But that also helped with the, the uh, sound, but also the visual looks, the spikes. And they, they took the fucking look of Venom and took it, uh, went 120% into it. I mean, went balls out. That's the way it fucking should be. And you know, all these bands in Norway definitely were in, influenced by Sarcophago, that look on INRI, the cover, and that look. I feel that was very influential on the Norwegian scene. And uh, what's interesting about Brazil, too, they, uh, you know, of course, you could look at them, and main, mainly they were uh, influenced by Bathory and whatnot, but also a lot of early German thrash, uh, Destruction, uh, Sodom, Demo, stuff like that, Creator. They were influenced by that, but you can also tell they were also influenced by Grindcore. There was a lot of Napalm Death mixed in here, because you listen to a lot of these bands... They're thrashy, but also very fucking noisy and blasty. You know, it's so I feel like it's a, a amalgamation of all that shit that really created this Brazilian sound, and it really is. It's a you know, America has a kind of a black metal sound. Norway has a sound. Brazil has a fucking sound. And, and back then, that, they didn't really refer to it as black metal. It was just fucking thrash metal, or how some people call it trash metal. But uh, very uh, anti-religious. Very uh, satanic, and uh, it was very fucking cool. And, and before I move on to this, I want to kind of talk about a uh, book that came out a few years ago. It's called United Forces, which is based on the uh, zine that was in Brazil. And uh, they put out a, a nice little told me here of all the issues here. The thick ass motherfucker. It's, uh, you know, the zinc got the uh, metal archives, 1986 to 1991, Marcelo Bart Batista. He's the one that uh, did this shit, this book. And I have to tell you, if you don't have this, you know, nobody's paying me to, tell you, to say this. I'm just saying for me as a fan, I fucking love this book. It's, I mean, it's kind of like the uh, Slayer book, uh, 
with Slayer the Zine from Norway with the fucking Battalion put out. They did a collections of all the issues of that, with, and it's got little stories in between each issue. It's the same thing with the United Forces. It's uh, Marcelo Batista's uh, approach to it. it it's got all the issues. Of course, they're originally in, in uh, Portuguese, but it's got the translation as well. Shit tons of photos. Most of them, well, I say half the bands I knew already, but there weren't a lot of them I learned about that I didn't know about. There, It's a very rich scene there. Lots of fucking cool shit. But this book, it, it's shitload of pictures, 528 pages, color pictures, black and white. Uh, lots of uh, interesting stories and forwards written by uh, this guy from Sepultura and some other motherfuckers in Volcano. And it tells some interesting stories of fights and whatnot, sarcophagus. You know, the history between Sepultura and Sarcophago and people getting their ass beaten up. And, you know, I'm sure you heard about that shit. Uh, sarcophago fighting, uh, Ratos de Pereo. Somebody got a bottle broke over their head one time. And then another time at that uh, other show at Wagner Antichrist got cheap shot when he was passed out drunk. Uh, it's a lot of shit like that. But cool stuff in there. Uh, the zine is cool. And, again, it, it, it really sucks you into that whole scene of back in the uh, mid 80s to early 90s what was going on there and it was a very uh, unique thing going on so with this you can't talk about the Brazilian scene without talking about uh, Cogamelo Records so uh, myself probably like every other American motherfucker I first heard of, Co of uh, Cogamelo from Sepultura because I did a Sepultura video. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about Sepultura. Those motherfuckers get plenty of press, if you will. But uh, for me, I bought Beneath the Remains. And then after that, I went backwards and bought uh, Schizophrenia. And then I bought uh, Morbid Visions. And my Morbid Visions copy was a new Renaissance copy. But then I became aware of Cogmelo. And then after that, uh, Sarcophago. Which, actually, I should have brought the fucking tape. I, I, the first sarcophago I heard was uh, Rotting. That Rotting EP or mini LP that was... Uh, fuck, I should have grabbed the motherfuckers. It was a maze that put it out. In the cover, it's the uh, censored cover. It's black, just the logo. And it says featuring original singer of Sepultura, which I thought was fucking stupid. And I know uh, I read that, uh, that Wagner Antichrist and the guy, people from Sarcophago were pissed off about that, which I could understand why, because it looks cheap by them trying to do that. But, uh, but before I get into uh, Sarcophago, let's you know, talk about uh, Cogbello Records. You know, it uh, began as a record store, uh, Belo Horizonte, Brazil in 1980, and then in 1985, it actually became a label, and it became a pretty influential-ass motherfucking label. That first, uh, that I don't know what the fucking first release was, but the uh, monumental release of uh, the Overdose Sepultura split, which uh, the Sepultura songs became the bestial devastation EP, which I think is some of Sepultura's best shit. Actually, I kind of even like that better than Morbid Visions, honestly. But both of them are pretty damn, pretty fucking good. But uh, yeah, they had a record store and uh, a walk-in shop, and it looked very cool. Over the, the years, they released all the uh, name bands from the Brazilian scene. Uh, there's so many of them. Mutilator, Overdose, Chacal, Holocausto, Sepultura, Sex Trash, uh, Volcano, Witch Hammer. It's, it, it goes on and on. So... Around that record store, a whole fucking scene grew. And it, it's just really interesting, too, because I, I remember I saw years ago of uh, a Sepultura video from back around 86 or something. They were playing live. I, I can't find it. I saw it on YouTube years ago. They're playing live in Brazil. There's a big uh, upside-down cross burning, and they're get, it sounds like they can barely even fucking play. Their guitars are all out of tune. And the place was completely fucking packed, and people were going crazy. And they had that raw sound, un out of tune guitars. It sounded like shit, but in a good way. It fucking was great. And that pretty much just set the uh, standard for uh, the black uh, Brazilian black metal scene. That uh, guitar tone, like everybody thinks about the Swedish uh, death metal in tune, just uh, dismember that guitar tone, buzzsaw guitar. Brazil has that their own guitar tone too. Very uh, raw and almost cheap sounding, but fucking good. Because I'm kind of jumping around, but going back to when I first heard uh, Sarcophago, I heard the Rotting EP first. And the first thing I noticed was the uh, 
just the guitar is raw as fuck. And I, I like the, the uh, Rotting EP, mini LP. I just, my only complaint about that is I wish these songs were shorter because it's, it, it feels like that they're trying to, they were trying to write longer songs just to sound more, uh, technical or something, which I know in Brazil that was happening where people were trying to run 88, try to mimic the Metallica Justice for All album and write longer songs, but longer songs don't mean better. So I feel Rotting, if you would have cut the songs in half, made it shorter, it would have been a fucking solid ass EP, but I still, I still like it. Still really good. It's funny too. I remember bought that, had the cassette, Metal Maniacs, which used to, was a good uh, magazine. They also, a lot of those writers didn't know fucking shit. I remember uh, that Sarcophagal Rotting EP got a horrible review. I remember, quote unquote, there was something along the lines of, this sounds like amateur shit of little kids that don't know how to play guitar trying to sound like Deicide. That's what uh, was said in the review. I can't remember word for word. But they gave it a horrible review. But that, that fucking magazine gave... All the early Cannibal Corpse albums are shitty review. Eaten Back to Life, Butchered at Birth. Uh, finally, when Tomb of the Mutilated came out, they started kind of giving it an okay review, but they used to tear that shit apart back then. But, uh, so, again, jumping around, I got fucking ADD, motherfucker! I can't think straight! But, about Cogamello, you know, they put out the uh, Warfare Noise LP, four-way split, if you will, or whatever, and that was some pretty fucking influential shit, too. I mean, they, they look at Chacal, Mutilator, Sarcophago, Holocausto, 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 can't even fucking talk. Great fucking LP, 30, 30 minutes, nice and short to the point. Uh, I know everybody fucking loved that Sarcophago uh, tracks on there, Satanus and Black Vomit, which the Black Vomit's fucking good-ass song. But uh, the other band is Mutilator, Holocausto, Chacal. I, are all fucking good. Honestly, I think Chacal is the weakest stuff on there and that's the opener i think the other bands mutilator and holocaust are definitely sounding better i mean i do like your call but on this particular release they sounded better but this is a monumental lp that really got it started and and i think a lot of people really gravitated to uh, sarcophago portion because just because of that look they had this fucking crazy ass look which as you can tell i fucking love it because us as musicians, we, we like all kinds of stuff like in our band and uh, the Sarcophago and also the Brazilian scene is a very big influence, very big influence. So, I mean, not that we, we don't sound like it, but it's really love that uh, that scene. But yeah, yeah, the Warfare Noise, Cargamello put that out in 1986 and then there was a Warfare Noise 2, it came out in 88. Um, that, that second one was okay, but the first one was monumental. I mean, fucking 1986. <clears throat> but let's kind of jump back in time, you know, in uh, Brazil. You had the Dorsal Atlantica band, which uh, was an early metal band in Brazil, which was okay. And how I came to, to know them was when they had that release that was on uh, Wild Rags Records. And I heard about that in, in 1990, but, that, but they had been around many years before that. And besides Dorsal Atlantica, we had uh, Volcano. Volcano, I from Sa Sao Paulo, Brazil, was also one of the early blasphemous bands in 1981. And uh, it so-called, they apparently influenced Sepultura a lot, which I can really tell. Uh, 1981, and uh, they pretty much, I don't want to say started all the blasphemy in uh, Brazil, could be fucking wrong, but 1981 was pretty fucking early to put that shit out. And they put out some fucking solid records over the years. I mean, I, and the thing about it, all these bands... The Volcano, I think, kind of really set the tone to really create, because a lot of these other bands, uh, Volcano, Mutilator, a lot of them had this same kind of sound in the raspy vocals, which is very distinctive for the Brazilian sound. Die, 
and then the this that uh did the vocal delivery as well that yeah, 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 which i fucking love a lot of bands had that and with volcano started that shit off and they're still around they're still fucking putting out records you know it's it's really fucking good and also, you know, before uh, Cogbello started producing these bands, a lot of them had to just make their own homemade demos and promote themselves and play these fucking small ass shows and fucking shitholes and whatnot. And that fucking book, United Forces, tells a lot of history about that stuff. So definitely check that out. But talking about the uh, warfare uh, noise, you know, so Jakal, like I said, I, I, that's my least favorite on that uh, compilation LP, but. Chacal is uh, pretty important in the scene as well. They uh, started in 1985, and they, they put out some good albums. Their debut album, uh, Abominable Ani, Ano Domini, which was put by uh, Cogmelo, and uh, Chacal is uh, basically Portuguese for Jackal which is cool. But yeah, you call they've, they've had a pretty solid uh, discography over their history. I mean, the Children That Sacrifice demo, The Warfare Noise, one split in that uh, debut LP I just mentioned, then also Living With The Pigs EP, The Man His Own Jackal. <laughs> And it goes forward. I mean, they've had a, a, a lot of fucking solid albums. And, you know, I, I am definitely a uh, fan of the band for sure. And now uh, with Sarcophago, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, th that's when people think about Brazil, Sepultura and then Sarcophago, and there's always been this uh, rivalry. And uh, Sarcophago is known in the underground as just underground cult band. But honestly, I think they could have been even bigger had the uh, later albums, they didn't do that drum machine bullshit because those later albums, song wise and wise and the way the vocals are, I I think they're they're good albums. But the fucking drum machine just sounds like pure shit. I mean, it sounds like fucking garbage. I can't even listen to those albums. And it fucking pisses me off because it. I think they, those albums really could have been something cool. I mean, it, that hate and the worst. It is the worst. It's fucking trash. But uh, INRI and even the Law of Laws of Scourge, I think it's a good album. I, I, I like it, you know. And then the Crush, Kill, Destroy EP is very fucking good. The Crust EP is fucking crusty garbage. But you know, INRI, that infamous cover. But honestly, for me, I really like. I wish that, I mentioned this in another video before, I wish INRI had the same production that Rotting had, because I just don't like those overly triggered snare that's on there. It sounds like a fucking typewriter or something, but I understand this was 1987. They were still trying to figure out how to record this stuff properly. But honestly, for me, when I listen to uh, Sarcophago, I always go and listen to the demos, the Satanic Lust demo, Black Vomit. <laughs> That stuff is fucking great. Raw shit. I know some people always say that sounds fucking like some hipster shit. As they say, oh, you know, I only listen to the demos. I'm, I'm not that person, but with Sarcophago, yes, the fucking demos are what I always like to go to. I fucking, if I'm going to listen to Sarcophago, I always just go back to the demos. And they have the, uh, a compilation L LP called uh, Die Hard, which has all that shit on there. That's all you need for me, if you ask me. Fucking solid crap. Another cool band, uh, Mutilator, which I think is really cool too. 1985 they started, of course, on the Warfare Noise LP. Again, uh, Bella Horizonte. Really good stuff. They've had some solid LP LPs. They are definitely more thrashy, but uh, some motherfucker just texted me, God damn, fuck you! But they have a more thrashy sound, but it still does have that black, deathy sound to it. Uh, their demos are cool. I really like Immortal Force. And Into the Strange is good too, but Immortal Force, both on Cogmello, is the best one. Immortal Force and Into the Strange are good. Uh, 
really cool stuff. And I guess they're back together now, which a lot of these bands do a bunch of old ass fucking men start playing again. But it's cool. They they have that thrash sound, and for me, I just need those two LPs, nothing else. And now Necro Butcher. Yes, motherfucker. Yes, yes. Necro Butcher hits his fucking favorite band. I you ain't motherfucker. Shut. Stay the fuck down. I'm talking about him now. Necro Butcher, fucking spawn 1988, Brazil. Fucking uh, Black Death. They have a very raw sound. Uh, not cool fucking demos. <laughs> In actuality, I guess all they had was demos, and it's fucking raw as fuck. And I like it. Good shit. They had the, the look and everything. Very short lived band, but for me, I feel pretty fucking. Uh, they made their fucking point. Really fucking good raw band. Even this fucking dumbass fucking puppet motherfucker likes the band. And also, you can't talk about Brazilian bands without talking about fucking sex trash. Uh, great fucking black thrash band. Um, the drummer from uh, Sarcophago ended end up going to play for them. Very fucking cool shit. Yeah, my favorite, I like the uh, the Triple X 7 inch EP, which I don't have the original from 1989, but uh, I have the uh, reissue, which is really fucking cool. Great cover in the back picture. Fucking great uh, name. The, the vocalist's name is the best name of all time. Pussy Ripper. Great name. But also, Sexual Carnage is a fucking solid-ass black thrash album. The cover is well. Fucking pure blasphemy. Uh, I fucking love the cover. Sex Trash! Another fucking band, uh, uh, Genocidio, which I, I had heard the name, but I actually read more about them in the uh, United Forces book, so I guess it's kind of a new... I started listening to them after reading the book because I hadn't heard them before that, but yeah, very good fucking black thrash sound. <laughs> still around uh but they put out some really cool shit 1986 and here we go still around fucking spreading evil as motherfucker <laughs> and then i mean of course talk Bello put out the warfare noise part two 1988 uh, it's good, but it's definitely not up to par as the original. You got Witch Hammer, uh, Mayhem, a band called Mayhem on there, uh, Mega Trash, Mega Thrash, and uh, M Amon Hammer. Uh, it it's good, but the first one is the fucking best one. That that's really all you need, honestly, if you ask me. But what the fuck do you think? Uh, there's a shitload of other uh, Brazilian bands. Uh, Armageddon is another good one. They're more fucking kind of punky sounding hardcore. You got Matt Rattos de Pareo. Uh, there's probably some other stuff I didn't list on here because there's no fucking way. I. I you know, you, I could write a, do a whole fucking 10 video series and really do a deep dive in all this shit, but I ain't got enough fucking time to do all that shit. Anyway, so I want to do more shit, maybe do early uh, American black metal touch upon video like this and finish and Czechoslovakia and all that shit, but it takes goddamn time, so more motherfucking shit's coming.